Hi guys, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. It's been about a week and a half, not quite two weeks since I talked to you guys last time. Um, doing pretty good. I had an unexpected week off from the theater uh, last week. Uh, tech, uh, tech. Tech Week, part of it was canceled because the uh, stage is not fully installed. And so in start of starting on the 1st, um, all of that week was canceled. And then we went and did a couple things on the 7th. And from what I understand, while well, we didn't go um, last night, Wednesday night, or today's Thursday, didn't go Thursday, we're not going tomorrow Friday, the next time is going to be Saturday at some wonderful time. And so that's going to give us Saturday, one, two, three, <laughs> four, maybe five days of tech rehearsals before the show opens in, in a, it's soon, 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 soon. Anyway, so, um... If you don't let me, I'm just talking about theater. Let's talk about theater. Um, they are building a brand new uh, theater in the round stage for the Hale Center Theater. Um, they're formally, currently formally located in West Valley. They're building a nice big theater over in Sandy. Um, it's, it's immense, guys. So when I was over there on, I guess, Tuesday, it was for our sort of walk through and start to do practice some of the quick changes. Um, we walked around the area and they've increased the size of the stage a little bit. And we went from three VOMs to four VOMs. Um, and the VOMs have numbers and lights. And so the lights are kind of tucked behind where the um, audience can't see. But that will definitely help us in the back knowing where things are and where we need to be. Um, so that's awesome. But it's huge, guys. There is so much space in the back um, for props and set pieces and quick change areas. Um, it's just, it's going to be wonderful. The uh, dressing rooms are huge. They're massive, uh, especially compared to what we were using over in West Valley. Um, it's just, it's wonderful. Um, I'm really excited. It's going to be, it's, it's going to look great. It's going to look great. It's going to be fun. Um, but it's a building under construction. Um, and so there is cement dust all over the place. I don't know if you've gone through a remodel or anything where there has been drilling into cement, but that cement dust, it gets everywhere and it's fine. And it's easy to kick back up into the air. And so you clean it and you hold still for like half an hour, an hour or so. And it's dirty again because all the cement dust has settled out of the air. Um, so it, it'll be interesting. We're supposed to open in... A week from tonight so next Thursday will be a soft opening and then we open open on Friday the 17th is when the show is supposed to go um, it's gonna be interesting you guys it's going to be interesting um, yeah hopefully it will be done but um, if you've ever done construction um, you you know that it everything runs it takes a lot longer than they think it will always Always, always, always. So I'm a, little, I'm a little anxious. I'm not the only one that's anxious. There's a lot of people who actually are full-time employees of the Hill who are a little anxious, but I can afford to not be anxious because it's not my job job. So I am not going to worry about it very much, but I should have thought to take some pictures while I was out there puttering around to, to show you, but I don't know that you would understand the change in scale from what we had to what it is going to be. And it's going to be great. And it's going to be fabulous. It's going to be fun. So, anyway. Hey, how are you guys doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. We're not quite as sleep deprived as we normally would be, which is a wonderful thing. Next week I'll probably be really, really sleep deprived and slightly grumpy because tech week. Um, anyway. So why don't we just, you know, segue straight on into um, the stitching and let's have a look at the... Progress report. So um, on Saturday last, after Tech Week had been canceled, I said, I need to get my car her oil changed. So we went over to the dealership because they've always treated me fairly. They've never tried to upsell me on something that I don't need, and I really appreciate that. So when they do come to me and say, hey, this needs to be looked at, I actually believe them because it doesn't need to be looked at every single time I show up, even though I had it changed last time, like Jiffy Lube does. I'm sorry, Jiffy Lube, but my transmission fluid does not need to be changed every single time I'm in here, especially when I know that it was changed 
last time I was here. So anyway, that was an old car that they did that to, and that's when I stopped going to Jiffy Lube. Anyway, so I had plenty of time to sit in the customer service lounge, had some football on, I listened to some football, and I looked, worked on um, the beautiful the, Le Roses. I don't know how to say that, but they're hollyhocks. So I worked on my hollyhocks. And, well, this is kind of a mess, but whatever. You guys will get the idea. Use your imagination. Because we're good at it, right? We're stitchers. We always use our imagination. So, let's see. Let's hold this here. That's not going to work. It's going to want to sink where I've got the hoop. Anyway, so I put these last two little leaves on up here and started on this stalk. So I did this guy and this guy, the stalk, this leaf, and I started on this second leaf when my car was all done and it was time to go. Whoops. So... So there you go. I unrolled it for you so you could kind of see the whole thing. I think it's just so pretty. It's just so pretty. This is on um, a 28 count. It's either a 28 count or a 32 count uh, Joblian or Lugana because I can never remember. I know there's a difference. I can't remember what it is. Um, evenly we from Color Cascades Fabrics and I think the color is Whole Lot of Love. Whole Lot of Love sounds about right. So that's what I worked on while I was hanging out at the dealership. Woot woot. I tell you what guys, hanging out at the dealership, thrill a minute. The nice part about the dealership though, I will have to say, is they have um, like movie popcorn, air pop popcorn, so you can have a bag of popcorn. They have a soda fountain so you can get your uh, Diet Coke or your Dr. Pepper or whatever you want. Just sit there and load up on popcorn and and soda if you so desire. So that's what I did. That's what I did. It stitched a little bit. It was all good. Whoops. That's not going to fall over. Okay. Um, number two major project that we have been working on, as you all know, is... Um, the Oh Holy Night Nativity Sampler from Stony Creek. And I put in pretty much all of this wonderful, beautiful uh, browns for Mr. Shepherd. I worked on him a lot while I was watching the BlizzCon coverage on my virtual ticket. And as I stitched these, all I could think about was caramel because these are delicious, wonderful uh, caramel colors. I do need to put in his head his head and his arm kind of go up here. But when I got done with all of this stuff, I thought I want a little bit of a change of pace. So I moved up here and I started doing some of the back stitch and stuff for the vine that runs across the top and, and this um, little frame bit runs across the top here. But I unrolled it all so you guys can kind of get an overall view of what he looks like. So that is a whole, ooh. Oh Holy Night uh, Nativity from Stony Creek. What are you? Oh, one of my little, not safety pins. What is another word for safe? Bobby pins. Uh, caught on my board. Because, I don't know, it's what I do. Have you shown you? See, I roll it up, stick a bobby right there to help keep it from unrolling and flopping around terribly. Just pin that like that, fold that up, and oh, the bag's over there, so I'm going to put this back here and hope for the best. Hope that the little cat does not get over there and sit on it like she likes to do, because cat. All right, so next up we have my at work lunch break project, and that has been the uh, Lizzie Kate mystery um, stitch along for... The, the spirit of Christmas. So I've got everything done in part two to here, except there's like another word, couple words up here and then the start of a wreath right here. I've seen the finished bit on the uh, Lizzie Kate Spirit of Christmas Mystery SAL Facebook page and there are some women who have re finished it. It's all released. It's really quite beautiful. Um, I need to order part three. I haven't got around to that yet. Surprise, surprise. You'd think me and I just buy everything left, right, upside down, willy-nilly, hither, thither, and yawn. Anyway, yammering. So this is where I am. She's coming along. I should be 
should be a little bit further along on, on that one, but um, let's see. One week we had a uh, department lunch, so I didn't stitch on her during department lunch. So that took away my lunch break free time project. And then we... Oh, and then it was BlizzCon on, on that Friday, last Friday. So I was kind of paying attention on the virtual ticket, watching all the announcements and the talkity talk and, you know, the good fun stuff. So I didn't, I didn't stitch on that day either. So Spirit of Christmas, wonderful stitch along thing over here. Let's put that over there so that the cat doesn't do her thing. And then since theater has started, it was time to start one of my theater projects. So I thought I would just sort of start in the middle. Um, when I was home and relaxed and not, you know, rushing back and forth between anything. So for my theater project bag, I pulled out Do Small Things with Great Love, which is Lizzie Kate. You guys know that I love Lizzie Kate. And I tell you what, this thing did not want to get started at all. So here we are. It's most of the word with. Um... The I is the only letter that I have not had to pick out for being in the wrong place. I did that, and then I ran out of thread. So I pulled some more thread to do the T and the H, because that was going that way. And I added one too many stitches in the T, and one too many stitches in the H. And I didn't figure it out until I was doing the last little foot over here on the H, and then I was like, ugh, terrible. So I had to pull all that and fix that. So then I was doing the W, and there's a little bird that goes over here, and so I did the W, and then the beak of the bird, and then I put the bird in, and then I was looking at it, and see this little uh, seraph that's got on the uh, W? There was one on the other side. I did not put the little seraph on the other side, which meant my bird was in the wrong place. Ugh. So I had to pull out the bird, I had to pull out part of my W and back it up long enough so that I would have enough of a tail to um, tuck, you know, back under in the back. And so that's, that one did not want to be started. It was giving me fits. It was giving me fits. I was nearly fit to be tied. <laughs> anyway, so there is that. That's all the projects that we had worked on. A really exciting thing about the uh, theater being built is they're doing an area for um, the dressers. Usually we're just kind of shoehorned into a corner of either the green room or um, like the uh, the dressing room that we were assigned to because we're primarily assigned to a dressing room but that's usually for all the slow changes you know where we're just there to help out zippers, shoes, double check the accessories, uh, make sure everything's you know good. Um, so we just usually had a little small cubby on one end of the dressing room, but they've got a, um, they call it a wardrobe room. So they're going to have cubbies for the dressers. There's going to be like a sewing machine and sewing supplies so we can fix things, you know, sew on a snap real quick, snow on a bar real quick if they become torn. Um, one of the uh, other kids that's there, he knows how to use the hem machine. So if a hem catches and starts to pull out, he can um, run it through the hem machine, you know, sew the hem back up at like intermission or so, so nobody's tripping over this thing. Um, let's see, did I say we're going to have cubbies? I think I did. Plus, the uh, laundry is going to be in there, and so we have laundry duties, which is, you know, pretty much typical of, of, uh, of dressers in most theaters, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be really, really good. So, there you go. Um, it, it's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it. But I'm not. You, you know, it's one of those things where you're like, yes, theater, I love it, and then it's like, oh, exhaustion, and like eight weeks without doing anything in the kitchen, and hardly any cooking, and the house chores just go to pot, and you know, it's just, it's a fine line, my friends, it's a fine line. There's a reason why I typically only like to do one a year, is because by the end of the year, I'm just, I'm just exhausted, just exhausted. So, you know, you know, what, what does excitement and terror all together look like? Ah! I, I don't know. Whatever. So, let's talk about Panzeri for a minute. Um, the other day, I sat down and went through all of the pansy patterns. See, let's see, where are they? They're over my other shoulder. Over there. Is that the pen? No, that's the, uh, that's the Nora Corbett ones. Oh, they're up there behind the green dragons. Nah, 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 nah. There it is. 
they're up in there on that shelf anyway. So I pulled a, full uh, a few things um, to start, and so I think I'm going to start this this little pansy from, um, let's see, this is Tea Garden. It's a lavender and lace. So it has the uh, the pattern for, whoops, now we're upside down. Let me get it straightened up. So they have the little pansies there. Um, they have some violets, those are the purple ones, and a rose. So I think I'm going to do that. And on this green fabric that I bought for this project 100 years ago when I bought the project, I think that's 28 count. I think it's 28 count, and I think it is um, water lily linen. I do a lot of stuff on water lily linen. A little silly because I do so much stuff on the water lily linen. Uh, the next up uh, one is I'm going to do this um, pansy seed packet from this, uh, what is this? American School of Needlework Cross Stitch Pansies. This was one of the first books I bought back in the early 90s when I started to um, get back into cross stitch after having been out of it for a little while. Anyway, and I've always I've always loved this one, so that one I want to start. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what sort of color of fabric to do it on because they've done it on a white, um, but it's nice on white, but I don't know if I want to do it on white. I want to do it on green because I do everything on green, but I don't know because there's a lot of overstitching going on in there and I, I guess we'll do it on white. I guess we'll do it on white. So there is that. Then, so these two are really, really quite similar. Um, so here is a Pansy Sampler by the Victoria Sampler, as you can see right there. Um, I'll probably do the, the main one that they've framed and done up as a needle, needle roll. So there is that, and it's lovely. But also, in the 19... February 1997 Cross Stitch and Needlework, here's the cover for those of you who want to see, um, Victoria Sampler, they interviewed Thea, and here is they call it Thoughts of You, also a pansy sampler. And I've been looking at these really closely, and the, uh, the design for the pansies is similar, is the same. They use a little bit different colors. Um, these hearts up here are point up, whereas here they're point down. Um, anyway, it's almost... Almost all of the detail work is the same. Um, the hard anger in, uh, is the same on both of them. What they say here, this one says thoughts of you and has re ribbon embroidery instead of um, heart's ease, which is uh, another um, name for pansies. And then it has this little vine detail sort of here. So anyway, that's, I'm trying to decide if I want to do either one of those or both of those, I don't know. They're really beautiful absolutely beautiful. So there is that. I love that. I want to do one of them. I'm really curious about the ribbon embroidery. That's something that I haven't done but I'm willing to try. I was looking at instructions the other day on how to do ribbon embroidery so we'll see. Um, they just called these, what did they call these? They called these uh, Japanese turn leaves something like that. Petals. There was definitely Japanese in the name and so now this is going to be yeah Japanese leaf stitch. It has the directions down here and it looks exceedingly simple. So I should be able to do that. I should be able to do that. So anyway, one of those I want to do, and since there's four weeks in, in Panzeri, um, I haven't decided what my fourth is. I thought about it. Um, I could start something massive. I've start, thought about starting uh, Thea Govner's um, Pansies on Black, which is a huge monstrous piece, but I don't know that I want to start something monstrous right away, so we'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'll only start three, three things for Panzeri, just so I don't go overboard. Anyway, so... 
that's what I'm thinking about doing, you guys. I probably ought to start gathering up the uh, materials so that I can actually stitch. Let's see. So that is everything for our project report. And I guess let's, let's move on into... Stashquisitions. Um, I did a lot of little videos, so I've got, I had to write them down because I was pretty sure I wouldn't remember what all the little videos were about. So three little videos. We've got some fun um, oh, stitching stuff, sewing stuff, and pansies because pansies. So three clips right here. Bam, bam, bam. Hey guys, mail call. I got a little bit of an order in from 123stitch for things that I absolutely, positively do not need in any way, shape, or form. It's good. It's all good. Um, so the other day I was flipping through my charts um, for all the, uh, the pansy stuff that I have that's um, it's back there somewhere on that shelf. All my pansy stuff. And I noticed on the back of one of them, there was another um, pansy sampler from the Victoria sampler that I didn't have. And so, of course, I had to go online and look at 123stitch and see if they had it, because if they had it, it was coming home with me. And um, sure enough, they did have it. And so it, it was even on clearance, you guys. Clearance, a pansy thing on clearance. So, um, anyway, here it is. Um, thoughts of you, a sampler needle roll, chatelaine, and scissor case, Victoria sampler. As you can see, the, uh, the pansies right there, all done up, nice and neat. Has like a little heart motif, some pulled thread, some drawn thread, a little bit of hard unger. And, interesting enough, a little bit of um, silk ribbon embroidery. Um, so this was on clearance, and I went ahead and picked up the um, accessory pack as well, and you can see all the ribbons and whatnot all bundled up nice and neat in there. So I'm kind of excited for that. I've been looking um, at the, the chart and thinking about what I want to do. I'm not sure if I want to add this to my list of things to stitch for pansu pansuary. Um, we shall definitely, definitely see, but it's, it's really, really, uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm excited. I like it. It looks fabulous. I'm interested to try out the ribbon embroidery. I'll probably have to watch about a hundred, um, YouTube videos before I decide that I can handle the, um, ribbon embroidery. But anyway, uh, it looks, it looks good. I want to try it. So we'll see if I start that one with Panzeri. So there is that. But of course, um, since no pattern can travel alone, and I was already in the um, clearance section over at One Two Three Stitch, I decided to poke around and see what other clearance things there were. And so I also picked up Summer Welcome, another um, Victoria Sampler pattern. It has some pulled thread, some specialty stitches. It looks adorable, very nice, very cute. Also picked up the accessory pack for that one. Buttons and beads and all sorts of pretties. So that will be coming, well that, that will be coming home. How can it come home to live with me when it's already home living with me? Mm. Okay, so there was that. Um, then I stumbled across this darling sweetheart tree pattern. It is finished into a pin keep, but it is, it's a square design, so I do enjoy the Biscornu, so I might make it up into a Biscornu, or I might not. I don't know. We'll think about it. But when I saw it, I thought, oh, that would make a good-sized little Biscornu. I'd probably eliminate the uh, very center um, Algerian eyelet right there so that the button would have something to sit and grab onto when you go to do that. Um, then I was just poking around, and so here are some heart-in-hand um, little Christmas ornaments that I thought were cute. So they had to come and live with me. And then the last thing 
that I bought uh, off of clearance from 123 Stitch is um, from Chair Stitchers and it's the Fairest Flowers November. But I had to get this one because it says Wallflower. If I am anything, I am a wallflower. Despite doing videos for you all, if there's more than like um, two people in a group, I'm kind of silent. I will sit and listen. I love to listen to people talk. I love it. Um, so if I'm a, if, if I ever make it to a um, thingy, a retreat, I'll probably just sit in the corner and happily stitch and listen to everybody. It's not that I'm not friendly. It's just that I am an introvert. And I'm really, really shy, despite the whole video thing going on here. So, shy. Anyway, Wallflower. Cracked me up. I love it. So, it came home to live with me. So, that is the wonderful things that came home in, um, in the mail. I should probably gather up my other charts for Panzuary and show them and show you what I think I might start because, you know, Panzuary is still a couple months away. November, December, Jan January, we start in February. February is Panzuary. So, we'll see. We'll see. I don't like starting a lot, a lot of stuff all at the same time because I like to actually work on the stuff that I have started and I don't like to have stuff sitting around that's not being worked on. But, that's how it is. Anyway, oh, oh, hey, let's talk about as I look at myself in the uh, viewfinder, the camera. This is a new knit from my mom. She has been working on a couple different cowls and stuff for me. And this is in a beautiful green. I just love it. Look at these, these wonderful cables up here. Aren't they cute? And then what are these? These are kind of, well, more cables and more leafy things. And isn't that pretty? Oh, I like it. And since we're going to be doing Tech Week here and being backstage, I'm breaking in one of my two new black backstage tech shirts that are just going to be all beat up by the end of the show. So, you know, get some use out of a black shirt. Anyway, talk to you later, guys. Bye! Hi, guys. More mail. Look what came in the mail today. I love stained glass things, you guys. Well, if it's pretty and it's shiny, I pretty much love it. And it's purple to boot, too. So I love that it has this little plate in it. And just, you know, the different bits of purple scrap here and there all over the place. So it's darling. I love it. Came in the mail today. I haven't decided where I'm going to put it yet. Um, certainly not going to hang by suction cup because this is a heavy little piece of um, glass art. Um, love it, love it, love it. Look down here, this little piece, this little piece right here. I don't know if you can see it. It has a little bit of a pattern in it. Oh, darling, darling, darling. So, love that. Now, you guys are seriously awesome and absolutely positively the business because um, I... Uh, showed that little piece of fabric that I wanted another half yard of and I wasn't sure where I could find it because I hadn't really seen it on Etsy. And now I forget that eBay exists, which is probably a good thing because I spend way too much money on the darling little cross stitch things as it is. But um, Diana is Kismet Stitches. She went to eBay. She found me the stuff and I got a yard of the stuff and I am really excited about this. Oh, those purples, they're just wonderful. I love them. Love them, love them, love them. So, of course, a yard came to live with me so I can make a couple of project bags or, I don't know, something out of that. But the seller also had um, the Tone on Tone pansies, so I got a yard of Tone on Tone pansies because this would make a great lining or a contrast or something like that. So here is a wonderful Tone on Tone for the pansies. But that's not all, folks. The crazy did not end there. No, 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 no. Darling little purple pansies on a little uh, purple background with little purple dots. They called this the uh, calico print of the uh, of the line. So I got a yard of that and it's just darling and it arrived and I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it all. So there you have that. And little cat is trying to climb into the closet. You can't go in the closet. There's nothing in there. I know it's dangerous for you. 
So anyway, um, another of my mom's knits. This one isn't new. I think I showed it to you guys last year, but it's just a little cowl. Um, it's leftover fabric from, not fabric, it's leftover yarn from a big uh, scarf, scarf. Leftover yarn from a scarf. No, not a scarf. Shawl. Shawl project that she was working on. And so I, you know, stole it from her. Well, she let me adopt it. But anyway, so lovely, warm, love it. I love fall when I get to wear all of my mom's knits. Love it, love it, love it. So there you go. We'll talk to you later. Bye. More stuff. If you hear some fans going, uh, I'll turn my computer on and its fan always goes. I usually have it off when I film. And um, the redneck neighbors, or maybe they're the hippies, I'm not sure, but it's like they're building a tiny house out in the uh, parking lot. And um, they've got their generator running so they can run their electric tools. It's so ghetto, my friends. It is ghetto. Anyway, cool stuff in the mail today. Um, let's start off with um, this darling little uh, pansy needle minder from Dainty Dots Decoupage at uh, Etsy.com. Yep, Etsy, I had to turn around and make sure. Anyway, she is out of the UK. And so all of you stitchers looking for maybe a needle minder supplier other than the wonderful Denkai, share seriously folks, go check out Denkai. She's got some marvelous stuff. Anyway, in Dainty Dot, she had these. She had a whole bunch of different flowers and darling stuff. Um, domino shaped, smooth. She put a button on the back with the magnet. I really, I, it's just so pretty. And it's on the back of an actual domino. Anyway, so pretty. I love it. I love it so much. And then the big thing, the big wonderful thing that has arrived is I bought this oil painting, pansy oil painting, um, from a gal out of uh, St. Petersburg, Russia. It's beautiful, you guys. I love it. I just love it. The uh, background is coming, from what I can see in the camera, the uh, view screen, it's coming out a little bit more brown than what it is, but it's it's really kind of a soft, lavendery mauve. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it, I love it, I love it. I cannot wait to um, get a couple extra pennies put together, and then I'm going to take it in and get it framed so I can hang it on the wall. As it is, I think I'm probably going to put it on top of my, um, I have a little bookshelf in my bedroom, and just prop it up on the bookshelf and lean it against the wall. Anyway, she was so darling. She sent a, dar a, pup, a, uh, a postcard, Russia, Russia on it, plus bonus chocolate. We all love bonus chocolate. So that is what has come in the mail today, and I just, I can't tell you guys how pleased I am over this, uh, this, 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 this. Love it. Anyway, see you guys later. Good stuff, right? Of course. It's pansies, and I bought it. Therefore, it's good stuff. All it can be is good stuff. Oh, I want to let William and uh, Michaela know that Princess does play with the little mice that she sent that they sent her. I would be surprised if Princess actually sent anything, anybody, anyone. She heard her name. She's come. Hi, kitty. Meow, meow. Meow, meow. Okay, just look at me. Anyway, so she does play with her little mice. I've tried to get some film of her playing with the mice that you sent her, but um, as soon as I turn the camera on, it makes a beepy beepy noise. And as soon as the beep noise goes, she looks at me and is like, what are you doing? I don't know if I trust you. So anyway, that's that's the cat, but she does love her the, uh, the little toys that you sent her. So thank you very much, William and Michaela. All right, so just a few more things, some stitchy, some not stitchy, but mostly pansy. Um, let's see, I bought another of these wonderful pansy mugs from Savannah Morris. Um, she does so Sue Livy Creations. Here is her wonderful card. Let's see if I can get that to focus and not be too shiny. Anyway, she does all sorts of little fun things with vinyl. I'm sure if you hit her up and said, I want a pansy mug too. She would be happy to sell you one. I bought my second one, you guys. So, love it. I need to wash it so I can use it. 
Um, this will probably, one of my, these two mugs will probably go to the theater with me, um, just so I have water. And it has my name on it, and nobody will steal my cup. Because they do. They steal your cups. Those thieving actors. Actually, they don't. Mostly, they get picked up and moved around, and then you have to go find them. And then, off of the Etsy, I found this cute little pansy pin. It's adorable! Anyway, so there is that. Oh, where do I want to put that? I want to put that right here. So, that's the non-stitchy stuff for the things we opened the other day. And then, here is um, Fabric of the Month from Under the Sea Fabrics. The color is Rosalind. And it's really pretty shades of reds and pinks. And I'm not going to take it out of the plastic right now, you guys. But it's really quite gorgeous. And then I got my um, Autumn 2017 issue of Stony Creek's Just Cross Stitch magazine. And I know Stitcherista did a flip through of that. So if you want to see the flip through, go over and check out Stitcherista. Now what's interesting about this magazine is I think that they have decided to kill it. What you say? They can't possibly decide to kill their magazine? Yes, I believe that they have decided to kill the magazine because in the letter from the editor they state that they aren't going to be taking any new subscription signups, that the magazine will be sold in LNS's um, and on their website. Now, I don't know about you, but I do have a fa fabulous um, LNS up here at Shepherd's Bush, but I have never seen Stony Creek, this magazine, at Shepherd's Bush. And I only make it up to Shepherd's Bush maybe twice a year, maybe three times a year, but usually twice a year. Um, and that's just the way it is. So what they are forcing me to do is go to their website to the, buy the magazine. Well, when my subscription runs out in winter of 2019. So I've got like a whole nother year coming of that. So um, I'm never going to remember to go onto their website and buy the magazine quarterly. I'm just not going to remember to do it. It's the simple truth. I really think that the number of magazines that they see purchased is going to plummet. And I think in several years, they will have to kill it. I think by not offering a subscription, they will kill their magazine. Um, they say the problem is printing costs have, ex have uh, gone up, that uh, mailing costs have gone up. This is true. All of this is true. Um, they print their magazine on a very fine, high quality uh, stock of paper, which I really appreciate, but they could um, step down in the niceness of the paper. Um, just cross stitch, I don't think their paper is as nice nor as thick as this, but it's serviceable. Um, two, they could have asked us if we would pay a little more on our subscription to, you know, keep the magazine being sent. I didn't get asked that. I didn't get, you know, would you pay more? Um, and they offered ridiculous discounts on, you buy three years, you get this magazine for stupid cheap. So, um, you could raise the uh, cost of the subscription so it's not stupid cheap. But I think I paid like $50 for three years. I mean, if we go, it's, it's, yeah. yeah anyway, I think they voluntarily decided to kill the magazine and, and that's just their excuse. So, rant over about that. So, you know, it was, it was good. Stony Creek cross stitch. I'll miss you but not enough to go onto your website and remember to purchase your magazine quarterly. <sighs> All right, what shall we do? We did the stash, we did the, uh, we did the random rant. Let's take a look at our... Flubies. Um, blah, 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 blah. So, two awesome new flubies for you guys this week. Um, the first lady that I met is Elizabeth Lott. Uh, she is the blogger behind uh, Paisley Post. So if you know of all her beautiful work that she has shown on her blog, she is now filming for us. Uh, she is working on a beautiful whip from the draw, Drawn Thread. Um, I believe that one was called Random Thoughts. And a, a gorgeous uh, fall scene from uh, the Prairie Schooler. Beautiful stuff. 
And then we meet Marcy Hart. Uh, her channel is a work of heart. Uh, she is a multi-crafter. Um, she is returning to cross stitch after spending your years uh, creating dolls, painting, quilting. Uh, she really is a multi-crafter. Uh, let's see. She shares some of her recent FFOs. Um, and there were lots and lots of beautiful projects. So those are our two true flubies uh, for the month. I will mention that Jamie Chalmers, Mr. X Stitch, has decided to venture into the uh, floss tube world. He's got two up that are labeled floss tube. Um, one, he talks about a book that he has just released, which had a pretty nice looking pattern of a fox in it. And then he sort of talks about his history of how he became Mr. X Stitch, you know, sort of a self-proclaimed um, promoter of the modern take on, on our hobby. So there are our wonderful new flubies. All right, let's turn the page of our notes because I have lots and lots and lots and lots of notes. So let's take a minute and talk about... BlizzCon! Um, so BlizzCon is a convention put on Blizzard, which is the publisher of World of Warcraft. So um, I've got five, six, I've got six bullet points, guys, of stuff that I want to talk about about BlizzCon. Um, and then a few other things that will be at the end of the BlizzCon description discussion so you know skip ahead if you're not into the world of warcraft or the battle cow woohoo okay so they did announce the uh, next expansion for world of warcraft at blizzcon they're calling it the battle for a azeroth um released the cinematic um you know teased a few things tried to get the hype train rolling and i honestly can say that i really am kind of meh on the whole theme the whole idea um, they're returning it to, you know, Horde versus Alliance, faction infighting, this and that and the other, and I just, I, I'm not into, I, I'm not into battling the Alliance, I've never been a PvPer, I'm never going to be a PvPer, I don't care. So, mm, not terribly on the hype train for the next expansion, yeah, that's fine. I might buy it when it comes out. Okay, I will buy it when it comes out, but I don't know that I will be doing the super early advanced pre-order purchase of the game thing. They did announce that they are adding six more races to the game, so there will be three races for the Horde and three races for the Alliance. I mean, and one of those races, races is the High Mountain Tauren, which are pretty much... More battle cows, but they got moose sense, moose, moose antlers, and and war paint. So I'm excited. I get to have more cows. More cows! Yay! Okay, so that's I'm really, really, really excited. Um, a lot of people are excited over the fact that they have are building in a option so that your orc can stand up straight because right now every all the orcs are kind of hunched over you know like that but they are adding a chiropractor to the barber shop so you can go in there and have your orc stand up tall so that is really quite wonderful um a lot of people are really excited about that i don't have an orc character i don't care so you know i'm glad there's something for a lot of other people to be excited about uh, they announced that all servers uh, across the board will be the same. So right now there are PvE servers and there are PvP servers. So if you have a character on a PvP server, it's always open season on the opposite faction. You can just murder them left and right, and sometimes they're better than you are, and they will murder you. The real problem comes if you're a level 45 and you are questing uh, through Gazakhstan and here comes a level 102 alliance and he's on his flying mount just hanging out there doing his thing la 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 and he's just ganking you left and right. Yeah, that's not fun kids. Not fun at all. So what they're doing is they are eliminating the designation of PvP server versus PvE server and having everybody on the server can choose how you want to play. So if you're in a major city, you can say, yes, 
I want to do PvP. And you can toggle a, toggle a, it's not really a switch, it's, you know, a pull down on your character screen and, and select the option. And then when you leave the city, um, through the magic of uh, CRZ, which is cross-realm zoning, they will shuttle everybody who has the PvP flag on with everybody else who happens, well, not everybody, everybody, but, you know, a good population of people, of other people who have PvP turned on. Whereas those of us who don't like PvP, we can leave PvP toggle off, and when we leave the main city, we will be um, CRZ, cross-realm zoned, you know, sharded into a bunch of other people who aren't necessarily bent on murdering everybody of the opposite faction. So... That's that's number two. So cows and no uh, undesired PvP. I'm really excited about that. So there's four of our five things. Let me turn the page here. Uh, 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 uh. All right. So the last thing that they announced that has the uh, fan base... All those poor neck bird, neck beards, just way, way too excited. I, you know, like happy little puppies until it doesn't go their own way, and then they're ravaging wild hyena dogs. Anyway, they announced that they were going to walk, launch what they call WoW Classic. Um, I've never played the so WoW Classic is going to be like the original World of Warcraft, what it was in 2004. Um, where leveling was hard, you ran out of quests, um, there was no flight pass, there weren't a lot of quality of life things in the game, so they're, you know, and a lot of people remember Vanilla WoW, you know, the original WoW, as like the glory days of WoW, it was so fabulous, this is wonderful, <sighs> you know, all those things. Maybe. Who knows? I never played it. Um... The only interest I really have in, in Classic WoW is um, one of the expansion packs called Cataclysm uh, changed some of the geography of the game. The storyline was there's a, a... was it? I don't know. Something happened, lands changed, and so I would like to, you know, get on Classic WoW and check out those areas that I've only seen as being one way and, you know, some of the people who have been playing it longer, like the uh, Thousand thousand Needles area, Thousand Islands area, I don't even know what it's called right now, Thousand Whatevers is now uh, a lake. But it used to be a very, very dry area with um, tall, um, like hoodoos that we have in Goblin Valley, only taller, bigger, you know, whatever. So I'd like to go and see it like it was back then. But other than that, I have no, I don't really want this thing, whatever. So that's probably, um, everybody's excited for it and they're I think it, acting like it's going to be here in a year, but I don't know. I kind of think it's going to be like two, three years down the road. There was a um, an announcement several years ago that you would be able to appear offline to your friends when you logged into the game, and it only took them five years to get appear offline into the system. So, uh, we'll see. And just the last little note about BlizzCon. Um, I ordered the... Uh, virtual ticket this year. This is the first year I did the virtual ticket. Um, and I actually enjoyed watching a lot of the panels and um, other stuff that I wouldn't have been able to see without the virtual ticket. I still think the virtual ticket is a little o overpriced. Um, $40 for um, like two days worth of content. Not even a, two, a full two days. <laughs> Maybe if they knocked it down to like 30 bucks, I would be a lot happier with it. But Overall, it was worth it. Um, I enjoyed it very, very much, and next year I'll think about doing Virtual Ticket again. So that was quite fun. So that is the end of BlizzCon. No more BlizzCon. Thumbs up. Moving on to other just really random... What are you doing, cat? Okay. Okay. Um, other things. I already told you about Tech Week being cancelled. So we can st skip that. I already gave you my rant on Stony Creek killing off their magazine. So we can skip that. 
Um, oh, one last thing about the Stony, the Death of Stony Creek magazine. I'm surprised that they haven't decided to go an online route. Like, I can subscribe to most of the, the uh, British Cross-Stitch magazines online, and I really enjoy that option. Uh, Just Cross-Stitch has an online option that you can subscribe to. So I'm really surprised that um, Stony Creek hasn't done an online option. Who knows? Um, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. That's right, guys. Pocket Camp. This is going to be for your mobile phone, guys you will be able to play Animal Camp from your cellular phone. It's going to be a mobile game. Okay, seriously, I was totally addicted to um, to Animal Cross Crossing when it first came out for the uh, GameCube way back when, whenever that was. When was it? When was it? 2004-ish, somewhere in there, I was still in California at the time, and I would come home from work and I would log in and just play it. Animal Crossing for hours and hours and hours and hours. I had the uh, next edition on the um, the Hooji Makuzits, um, the DS2. I had the, that Animal Crossing for the DS2. I had Animal Crossing for the Wii. Lots and lots of Animal Crossing, you guys. I just loved it. So that's coming out here the end of November. So excited. So excited. Ah, I know, right? Right? Oh, anyway, so I've been watching some um, Let's Play videos from Australia because it soft launched in Australia back on the 24th, uh, 25th, something like that of October. So if you're an Aussie, you can already download um, Pocket Camp. I know, I can hardly wait for it to come out. It's going to totally be sucking up all my cross-stitch time and all my wow time because I'm a little bit obsessive when it comes to things like that. I'm not crazy. You are. Okay, so I think that's everything. Is that everything, Princess? Is that everything? Meow. She's not impressed, guys. Not impressed at all. All right, that is everything. Thank you for everyone who likes my videos and comments and subscribes. I really appreciate you all. Keeps me chugging along. I'm so, so thankful for you. Cough break. Not as fun as guitar break or drum break, but sometimes a very needed thing. That was unexpected. Anyway, thank you to everybody who likes, comments, and subscribes. I hope you guys have a good day. I hope you get to stitch as much as you want to and that little stitchy bug of yours just snuggles up right next to you and you have a good week with him. I hope that frog stays far, far away from you. Hugs and stitches, everybody. Bye.